Good morning. You join me today with the uh, Strike King camera crew. We're on the Kennet and Avon Canal. Uh, cracking little venue. And uh, today we're going to do some drop shotting. So hopefully you'll pick up a few tips along the way. Uh, and hopefully we'll catch a few fish and uh, we'll see what we can do for you. Okay, so we're down beside the canal and I'm gonna talk about what you need to look for. So we have any feature is, you can usually hold a predator. So be it a lock, boats, between boats, fishing tight between boats, bridge stanchions, along the wall at a bridge, all those sort of places that are very visual that give shelter to the fish. So it gives shelter to the fry and it also gives shelter and it's a perfect ambush spot for a predator. So you look for those sort of features and then it's not just the features that you can physically see, think about the features that are, are under the water. So be that the ledge of the boat channel, be it a stream coming back in on the Kennet and Avon, um, you've got what we call a top-up system. So you get a stream coming in, which is almost like it sometimes in the winter is a river. So you get a crease, so you can fish either side of the crease. So it gives you, you've got structure that you can just about see that holds fish. Um, if you're fishing for the ledge, you can work along then. So that gives you another feature. You can't see it from above, but underneath the water, those fish can be tight to that ledge be it predators or fry. So always think about not just what you can see, about what you can't see, first of all, under the water. So that, if you follow those sort of features and you fish it with a drop shot, the chances are you're gonna pick up some fish at some stage. Okay, so one very important thing to consider is your lure colour. So a lot of people when they're confronted with a canal with brown chocolate water they think of going to light colours, natural colours, silvers. I always go the exact opposite because what I'm trying to do is create as definitive a profile as possible. So by going to a dark colour it gives a far better contrast against the dirty water than a silver lure would. Conversely, when you're confronted with crystal clear water, I tend to go for the silvers. Um, on some of the hard lures, I'll go for a, a semi-opaque lure, one that you can see through, almost transparent. So I go for naturals. So I look for naturals in clear water and dark colours in murky water. In between that, you've obviously got your brights, your reds and everything else. So colours tend to be, I suppose, what works on the day. So when you go out, always make sure you've got a good selection of colours because what you will find one colour will work better than others due to light conditions and water clarity. Okay, so a little bit more detail on drop shotting. When you're fishing vertical against structure on your own bank, as we've been doing a lot today, bear in mind that the distance from your lead to the hook is the distance that you're fishing off the bottom. So if you want to be really close, you'll bring the lead up. If you want to fish it four or five inches off the bottom, you move your lead four or five inches away. However, if you then start fishing the far bank, your line is at a tangent. So what would happen is, if you only had three or four inches there, your lure is stuck on the deck. 
So by increasing that, you keep, you've got the option to keep that lure off the deck and you can fish it with a high rod to keep it well up. You can fish it with a low rod and put it back down on the deck. So you've got versatility there. So another thing to think about is what the lure is actually made of. So if we take the drop shot half shell, shell for instance, that is heavily impregnated with salt. So it sinks very quickly. So you can let that sink down to the deck and with the tail that it's got on it, that will give a really enticing movement to it. However, if you then look at the finesse worm, which is a floating lure, that will come up in the water. So if you've got your rod low and you lift it and go slack, the lure will come up and rise up. So that gives you two completely different presentations with basically the same setup. So all you're doing is changing the lure from a sinker to a floater or vice versa. Okay, so uh, we're coming towards the end of the day now. Um, it's been a hard one, but it's been very interesting. Um, I'd just perhaps like to run you through some of the lures that we've been using today. Um, the first one is a new Strike King, and it's called the Drop Shot Half Shell. And it's got a fine ribbed body, really goes thin at the tail, and the tail is almost, I'd describe it as a beaver's tail. Nice and flat, and it works terrifically. It's actually got a fin on the top, which keeps the lure in its right plane. And on the drop shot, deadly. I can see some big, big perch being caught on this during the winter months. Um, we've had a few on it today, nothing big, but we've caught. And uh, I've certainly got confidence that during the winter months, this is gonna be one of my go-tos for the drop shot. So we've used that. We've also had a play with uh, a finesse worm. Um, perhaps a little bit big for today, um, but uh, we've caught a fish on it. So, you know, there you go. And another one of my favorites is the Ned Bug. Um, I've caught so many fish on this during the, the summer months. Um, and although it's called a Ned Bug and works terrifically on a Ned rig, um, equally, when you rig it as a drop shot bait, the, uh, the claws at the back give it some terrific action. Um, and we've had a number of hits on that today. So that's the, th the three we've been using and concentrating on. Um, of course, you know, you, I can say the finesse worm's too big for today. I could say with the size of fish we've been catching, that could be too big. You can always cut them down to suit. So whilst they work terrifically as they are, if the fish are really shy, you're not catching the big fish, you're only catching small fish, that's the time to think outside of the box and think about cutting a lure down and using it smaller. Um, again, they work as they come, use your thought process and think outside the box. So that runs through the, the lures we've been using. Um, perhaps just a quick one on how we've been hooking them. We've been very much nose hooking them, which gives them the maximum movement that you can get. Um, it also means that to a certain extent, you can use a slightly smaller hook. So we've been just using a, a size four drop shot hook today. Um, I don't think we've missed one fish. So, you know, they tend to come in and hit it hard. So that's how we've been hooking them. Um, weight wise, we've been using the Strike King tungsten drop shot leads. Uh, really nice quality. Um, the clip doesn't cut the fluorocarbon that's a really important thing some of these some of them that are out there you clip them up and they cut the cut your line and away you go so that's what we've been using as the weight um, and as I said we've been cutting down some of the finesse worms um, just to play with really um, just to get some bites keep on catching fish moved up to another lock now and uh, I've just been thinking about some of the things that I do when I, I'm fishing. I don't perhaps, I just take it for granted, it's just something I do. Um, this is a bonus tip. 
so I'm fishing here just above an inlet and what I've done is with a permanent marker I've marked a band on my braid so when the drop shot weight hits bottom I can see how far out of the water that marker is. As I move it across I've got five or six inches of that to that marker I move it across to where the inlet is and what it shows me straight away is where you've got the pressure the water coming through you've got a hollow so now my black marker is in the water so I know now that as I've come across there it's dropped off down into a hollow and then I'm sure if I keep going it will come back up the other side so you've got a channel that goes out which is obviously perhaps a good holding spot for a fish or two so apart from finding hollows where this has come through the other way I use it is perhaps when I'm working along a wall or a feature and I want to find where the boat channel is so I can work it along and I can work it out and I can cast it out a little way and find out exactly where the boat channel is so you're going out then you see your braid your marker on the braid drop off and that's where your channel is so that's a slope that you can follow along and fish Right, well, we just started to lose the light a little bit now um, and we've had a long old day. It's an extra one for Ben because he's got a long drive back. But um, yeah, it's been a hard one, but it's been interesting. Um, I think we've learned a little bit. Hopefully how we fished and the tips that we've passed on will help you guys in the future. Um, and just remember, if you like it, like and subscribe and share.